What we created is a distributed programmable uh, home automation system that uses PIC32s and NRFs with a mesh layer. As you can see, we've created three standalone nodes that are hooked up through battery supplies, have two input outputs, and have a TFT display so you can see what's actually going on in them. Hooked up to the computer through a command line user interface is the master node which will communicate with the rest of the nodes. We'll now begin our demonstration. So first I will turn node, 10 on, uh, node 40 on actually. So you're, you're, you're turning these on by popping a battery in? Yep. Yeah. So that okay. is a, this so is that's... a little TFT display that gives us some information. Uh huh. So he just sent a query response. Uh, let me describe this a little. So master has no path to this node right now. So it sends out a flood message, which is given by the one as its first byte. He receives the flood message. He sends his own reply. Master now receives it, so now there's a path from 50 to 40. He now sends that data packet, which we see here, which is zero as the first byte. In a query, this guy receives the data, and he wants to send his own information back. There's no, inf there's no path from 40 to 50, so this guy sends his own flood. This guy sends a reply here, and now he sends his data back. So that's good. And okay. if you look at the command line interface, we see that the input is 984, which is what it says on the TFT as well. Okay. So essentially what we did is we queried the input that was connected to node 40. Um, right now the input is high because the IR transmitter there is not switched on. This is essentially an IR transmitter and receiver system. Right? Um, so let's actually fix that. So let's turn the IR transmitter on. So if we look on the display again, we see that uh, we received the two packets and now um, this essentially the means that the IR is high. So if you look on the display, you can see the input. If I move my hand in the way, you can see that it notices. Because yes. we turned it on remotely. Yep, okay. All right, so we have a working IR system, but what can we really do with it, right? So let's try to make an alarm system out of it. Let's connect one, another node, an LED, and let's try to turn the LED on whenever someone walks across the IR line. So I'm going to pop this guy and turn this guy on. This is node 10. So we just sent out another query. Uh, this guy goes through the same exact path that I described for 40, but we see a lot more like flood and reply messages. This is because this guy receives a flood, this guy receives a flood, and they're all just propagating around. But we have a flood filter in the software, which means this guy essentially just ignores any data that it doesn't really need. Okay, and now, so, so now these both are connected back to the command line over here when you're doing some manipulations of the command line. So does this mean you now you can use the infrared to control this? Yes, so uh, Raghav just sent two link commands. He linked uh, 10 onto 40. So now uh, 10 has an on dependency based off 40 and an off dependency based off 40. So now we can see that uh, 10 is a subscriber here. Now if I put my hand here, the LED lights up. Cool. Completely. And then we can force it on or off. So we can force maybe it on. We dropped the packet. Would so you force it off? I'm just going to have to go through the path to start again. Yeah. Okay, so, so you, you just sent a direct force command. So you did a direct force command to turn and what it on. What that did is because we forced it on, it's like this is an overriding command. So, so it cleared now, all the dependencies, so now it's no longer connected that to doesn't care. Right. Okay. So right now, all we've seen with the mesh is direct node-to-node -node communication, however, because the quickest path is generally just directly communication. So uh, let's pretend 10 gets turned off. And we want to find a new path to it. Okay. So first try and just force 10 now. Make sure the cache is cleared on that guy. So because 10 is off right now, It's, the cache isn't cleared. Right. So even though 10 was off... Okay, yeah. So even though 10 is off, this guy received a packet because this guy still has a path to 10 mm -hmm. from the earlier link. So he's sending from 40 to 10. So if I pop this back in, we'll now have a new path to 10. So if he forces 10 on, this guy does turn on. But if we look on the TFT, we see that we're receiving data here first, and this guy's now sending directly to 10. So the path to 10 is instead of from 50 to 10, it's from 50 to 40 to 10. So that's how the mesh network creates new paths. And cool. Everything. So 
dynamic dynamic path uh, discovery. Yes. Uh, uh, reconfigurable on the fly. Yep, and it always gives back the quickest quickest uh, path because that's what it just looks for. And uh, generally in our case, it's the most direct path when they're super close together like this. But you can force a setting where we have a multi-node hop. And if we tried longer distances, we would probably see more hops in terms of paths as well. Okay, thank you.